Hi, this is Christopher Bruzo. Welcome back to the lightweight 308 Winchester hunting rifle series. Previously, I broke down these rifles. Uh, you can go back and watch the videos. We got a Kimber 84M uh, with a Zeiss D of REV 1.5 to 6 by 42 T Star and a Forbes 20B with a Leupold VX3 2.5 to 8 by 36. The Kimber is mine. The Forbes is my brother-in-law's hunting rifle. Uh, I generally shy away from super lightweight hunting rifles. They are extremely hard to shoot. They're very easy to carry, and that's why people hunt with them. But when it comes to placing an accurate shot, they're very lightweight. They move a lot. They recoil a lot, a lot and they're hard to shoot. Uh, you are not going to get, like, a, my match rifle, if I'm getting three-quarter MOA, it's okay. I'm not going to brag about it. I'm, I'm happy. Uh, it's kind of like the max I want to see. With these, if I'm getting... I would be very surprised if either could shoot one MOA with with a sure. I mean, I know Kimber advertises sub MOA, but get them to make true on that. In reality, the, the vital zone doesn't it doesn't require a super accurate rifle. The shooter comes into play immensely with lightweight rifles and I am not a great shooter of lightweight rifles. Uh, they're hard to shoot. I don't shoot them a ton. Before uh, turning on the camera I uh, shot 20 rounds of each with a surplus uh, federal 149 grain full metal jacket 308 ammo just to get a feel for it and find a reasonable setup on the bench that worked for shooting these rifles. I have had horrible luck shooting a hunting rifle or a compact style hunting rifle, something like this, something like a Ruger American. If you have like a mountain hunting style stock, I can't shoot them all off a bipod. Your shoulder is in the completely wrong position and they rock and are not accurate. These rifles are designed to be shot upright. At least the upper portion of your body, whether it's from a tree stand, off a pack, off shooting sticks, uh, freehand. I've shot several deer freehand and, and very few people practice that because going to the range and practicing it does not produce good groups and it's not good for your confidence. But anyway, uh, I chose to shoot these off a bench and I used bags. When practicing, I was trying more of a free recoil modified free recoil position which I use a lot in a competition off barricades and any sort of prop that's not prone where you can't get a bipod I'm shooting what I refer to as a modified free recoil where the rifle the balance point of the rifle is on the bag your hand is on the front of the scope and that's how you're adjusting your your elevation, it works great. I, mean, I hit targets, it's not a problem, but with these, they they kick so much, that did not work. Um, you'll see in the video, I mean, they rock like crazy. And uh, I was not getting good results. I mean, it's probably shooting four MOA, so that didn't work, but... To give you an idea of what I, I'm talking about, you can see this.
Now again, these are very lightweight rifles. There's no muzzle brake, and I mean, these are roughly, you know, two-thirds the weight of the, the rifles I normally hunt with, and my competition rifle is 22 pounds. Uh, so these do not recoil the same way. When you try to shoot like that, what you're looking for, you want the rifle to slide straight back. And not a super lot, but any movement you want straight back. You don't want the rifle rocking like that. So I realized there was a problem. So I started building up the rear. And when I did that, the rear was solid, but the front would come up off the bag. Uh, so I had to modify that, and I had the rear, I had a bag, so I put my hand up here to help hold it down. And those were the best results I got. I'm not a great shooter of lightweight rifles, and the accuracy shouldn't be judged by this, uh, of these rifles shouldn't be judged by this video. Uh, what we're looking at is a comparison of accuracy. I was shooting these fairly consistent. Uh, I did a total of 12 targets. I, I actually only am showing you six. It's completely redundant. The accuracy of the first six sets to the second was very, very, very similar. So I was shooting these about the best I could for that day. I need to practice more with them. Um, but a, a an MOA expectation is not really uh, it's not appropriate for these these rifles. Uh, one and a half would be a good goal. Sub two uh, would kind of be my my cutoff. So. <clears throat> The way I shot these three shots each from the Kimber and from the Forbes back and forth. And well, let's go to the first range video. Okay, so that was the best group I shot all day. It was 1.42 MOA. Uh, you've got one shot slightly high, one dead center, and one slightly higher and about a bullet diameter and a half to the right. If the two closest bullets were shot in sequence, I would say it's due to the barrel heating up, something like that. Even though this this rifle, that one isn't, this one is free-floated. Um, I mean, that's, a, in my opinion, that's a reasonable group for this rifle with me shooting. Uh, maybe you would do a lot better or worse. That's what I shot, so. Um, looking at the video, I'm, I'm managing to recoil reasonably well, and uh, the group shows that. So let's go to the Forbes and see how that does.
So that group was similar in shape to what the, the group with the Kimber was. You had two high and one low. But the sequence was different. And the sequence kind of makes more sense. You have one low and then two high. And they were just almost touching the, the two high ones. And this rifle is bed from the back to the front. The barrel is not free floated. So the thinking when shooting that was, okay, the first shot went out, heated up the barrel, point of impact changed for the next two shots. I mean, the, the next two shots were almost touching. So, so let's go shoot the Kimber again. So I'm pleased to see that the rifle is not moving a lot. It's, it's kicking back a significant amount, but I don't think there's anything you can, can do about that. The recoil pad is going to compress. Your, your body's going to move slightly. I'm not seeing a whole lot of movement in the muzzle. And uh, that group was 1.7 MOA. What has me a little baffled is you have one shot to uh, it's the high right, and then one dead center. I mean, as dead center as you can be, and then the next shot is, I guess, windage aligned with the, the first one fairly well, not, I mean, maybe half a bullet diameter but the elevation is dead in line with, with the center of the target. So I don't know if we're hitting the accuracy of this rifle. I'm sure I'm playing into it some, but uh, I'm beginning to believe this is about as accurate as the rifle ammunition I was using, as well as me, uh, can shoot. And it's because it, it mimics what, I, what we saw on the, the first target with this rifle, as well as what I was seeing earlier in the day when I was practicing. So, uh, not super disappointed with that. Uh, let's see how consistent the Forbes rifle is. So that's interesting. Um, we didn't see the one low too high because I was giving about 10 minutes of uh, cooling down time uh, between the groups to the point where you grab the barrel and yeah, it's warm, uh, but it's not hot. It's not, you know, you could put it against your face and it, you wouldn't pull away. But the first shot, it looks like I'm not controlling the recoil great. Uh, the muzzle jumps a little bit, uh, a bit more than I would like to see. Uh, second shot looks pretty good. It looks about how I'm shooting the Kimber. 
And third shot jumps again, uh, similar to the first one, but that shot is further away from the other two shots. I don't know what to make of that. And it's interesting, so let, let's, let's go on before we make some conclusions and back to the Kimber. So, again, I think I'm controlling the recoil of the Kimber a bit better than I am with the Forbes. And these rifles have a half pound plus difference between them because when I weighed it, I didn't have the stock pack on. Uh, and that could play into the accuracy. But... <clears throat> a 2.2 MOA group I'd like to see better I, I where I hunt I would still hunt with this rifle I'm taking shots well within a hundred yards I'm, I'm shooting in pine forests and hardwood hardwood forests in North Carolina it's not mountaintop to mountaintop shooting I mean most shots are within 50, 60 yards. So reasonable, not ideal, um, but let's finish off and see how the, the Forbes did with the third group. So, not bad, not great, 2.2 MOA, uh, I look, to, to me, I look fairly comfortable behind the rifle. Um, but I'm not seeing a pattern between shots uh, other than the accuracy of the Forbes being consistent um, as well as the actually the Kimber. Now the Kimbers for this test is more accurate than the Forbes, not by a considerable amount uh, or MOA, something like that. But I am clearly more comfortable watching the video shooting the Kimber. This is my rifle. This is one of my favorite scopes. It's really easy to get behind. Uh, it's a slightly heavier rifle, and I have a stock pack on it. And this gets my cheek weld consistent. And both of these scopes have fixed parallax. This gets my cheek weld consistent my sight picture is very consistent and I just feel more comfortable 
behind this rifle because it's set up for me. Uh, the first thing I would do is put a cheek riser on this. Um, that would certainly be my, my first step. Then I'd adjust the trigger down a bit. And I didn't feel as comfortable shooting the forms. And that's probably why you're seeing it shoot larger groups. Uh, for all intents and purposes, these act, the accuracy is consistent between the two. So I don't think we can make any conclusions for a three shot string as to free floated or fully bedded, whether that's better. Um, the Forbes did have a higher power scope. It's eight power versus six power on the Zeiss. However, the, the well, I mean, it's obvious six power, 42 objective, uh, the field of view was bigger on the Zeiss. But this is a much easier scope to get behind. And purchase new, the Zeiss is probably five times the, the cost of the loophole. So it's probably not a fair comparison, but the scope definitely plays into it. I'm just more comfortable behind this rifle. And I could set them up with the same scopes, I guess, to, to, to get a better comparison, but I thought this would be fun. Um, I, I didn't have any issues feeding either of them. You'll see in the last time I shot the Forbes, the, the round didn't eject, and I had to pull it out, and that's, that's because my bag was up there to where it ejected. Now, the Kimber has a much more positive ejection, and it's controlled round feed, and it shoots the rounds almost to the three, maybe the four o'clock position, and with authority. And that depends on how fast you're moving the bolt. Uh, the Forbes ejected absolutely fine, but it was more of like a five, six o'clock ejection. I don't know what to make of that, but it's a difference between, between the actions. Um, the actions, the Kimber, I mean, both have probably been shot about the same amount of times. I have, uh, before I started this video, I was like 182 shots on the Kimber, which is a reasonable amount for a hunting rifle. I don't know how many uh, Chris has on this. I would guess it's about the same. I mean, he's not at the range every weekend, but he, he does shoot it. The Kimber action felt way smoother. It just felt much smoother working that action. You didn't feel any grit in it. Uh, as to With the Forbes, you felt a, a little bit of play. Uh, the bolt fit between the bolt diameter and the... the ID of the action is not as tight as the Kimber, and that very well might be part of the design. Um, kind of that, that Glock mentality where things that don't need to fit tightly don't, so they don't fail, they don't get jammed. And maybe you put another 100 rounds through it the or lap the bolt. I would kind of expect the Forbes lap the bolt. I honestly don't know. I mean, it, it's not to say this action doesn't cycle um, well. Both of these are light years ahead of your factory Ruger American um, Savage Remington 700. And actually, in defense of that, uh, this action was slicked up um, by Rivers Bend Gun Company, and this is as delivered from Forbes, but I don't recall the, the Kimber having a lot of a grit when you move the bolt. Um, again, that's taking nothing away from the Forbes. I, I think it's an absolutely great rifle, and I would kill to, to own one. Um, I think I just shot the Kimber slightly better. If I spent more time shooting this, 
uh, I could probably improve the accuracy quite a bit. I think more so than the rifle, the issue is me. Um, and the, the difference between them all has to do with the shooter. And this is not my forte in lightweight hunting rifles. Um, my hunting rifles are much heavier. Uh, so, I don't know, make of that what you will. They're both great rifles, and personally, I would take either deer hunting this fall for the type of deer hunting I do. And I appreciate you watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, and until next time, enjoy.